Fear is everywhere in the markets right now as investors are licking their wounds and bracing for more impact. On top of that, it's only the prices of assets that are taking a hit. Meanwhile, prices of goods and services like food, cars, energy, like gas, and rent, they are all still skyrocketing as inflation is ramping higher. This puts the Federal Reserve in a very tight spot, which means that number one, they will likely be extremely careful with their words tomorrow. They've got an FOMC meeting going on right now, today and tomorrow, and then they have a press conference tomorrow on Wednesday after the conclusion. Because essentially what they are trying to do right now is achieve the impossible which is a soft landing. Ready? Let's dive in. I've used this example before, but have you ever seen the movie 127 Hours with James Franco? It's a true story of Aaron Ralston. He's a biker. He went out biking by himself, fell down in a small little canyon and got his arm wedged in between a giant boulder and the canyon wall. After he sat there for, you know, 127 hours, basically, he had to make a decision. He had wait, waited there that entire time, waiting for somebody to see if anybody could come and rescue him. Nobody showed up. So he had two choices to make. Choice number one, he could take the less less painful short term option, which was to just keep on waiting, hope somebody rescues him. And if not, he would just die. Less painful short term leading to his death. His second choice he could make cut off his own arm, far more painful short term, but it allowed him to stay alive. And obviously, as the movie was made about him, that is what he chose to do and rescued himself that way. The Fed today is in an extremely similar spot in between a rock and a hard place with inflation ramping up on one side and extremely fragile markets on the other side. If they want to attack inflation, they have to continue the taper, eventually stop purchasing their assets and start raising interest rates. That that will attack inflation because you're sucking money out of the system. Money becomes more valuable relative to all of the stuff. And then uh, prices go down as a result that combats inflation. The problem is when prices go down, things that are the most expensive and the least needed tumble faster. And just like inflation moves through the system by hitting assets first and goods and services second, so does deflation. And that's why we're seeing the markets react like this before the prices of goods and services start reacting downwards because the markets are are pricing in the chance of deflation, their asset prices are starting to tank, and eventually that would bleed over into the price of goods and services, but not before the market completely collapses. Not to mention the fact that households, corporations, and governments are at all time record highs in terms of leverage, in terms of debt, more debt than we've ever had, no matter how you measure it. And on top of that, it's all that debt on top of the lowest interest rates basically in history, which means that rising interest rates puts more pain on that debt if you want to roll that debt over and get new debt to pay off that old debt, it costs more. So less and less debt will be rolled over. That debt gets paid off. When debt is paid off, that money ceases to exist. That money goes out of existence, just like when new loans are made, that's loaning money into existence. So it's the opposite effect there. So you've got more debt being paid off when interest rates are going up, less new loans are being made because it's more expensive. And then you also have insolvency and bankruptcy start to show up as cash flow dries up and you have players who are not able to continue servicing the debt and have to uh, go bankrupt, claim insolvency. And it's only a matter of time before that starts to trickle over into employment and these hardships start to reach households all across the nation. Now, on the other hand, if the Federal Reserve does not want to risk that deflationary death spiral that I just described happening, they can instead decide to ignore inflation and just protect the markets. This would mean continue to buy assets, add assets onto their balance sheet that injects new money into the economy, monetize government debt to facilitate government deficit spending, which is in excess of its ability to tax and borrow out of the economy. It also means keeping rates low. That way banks can continue to provide more and more loans because the demand for that debt is there because it continues to be cheap and they can support markets that way. But again, that's inflationary. That lifts the prices of assets, which again, trickles over into the prices of goods and services. So they can choose to ignore inflation to support market prices, asset prices. But eventually that leads to so much inflation that you risk hyperinflation. You risk people dumping the currency. You risk people buying anything and everything 
everything they can just so that they can dump their dollars as fast as possible. There are plenty of examples throughout history of countries doing this and a country like Lebanon is going through it right now as we speak. Now, given the fact that the mandate to the Federal Reserve given to them by Congress explicitly includes price stability and not market stability, and given the fact that the Federal Reserve has been so committed to reducing their asset purchases, eventually stopping them soon and raising interest rates, my bet is they will continue along that path. So far, there are no dominoes falling over in the global financial system. All we've seen so far is moderate corrections in asset prices. So the Fed's meeting tomorrow, I fully expect to hear all the good signs of economic growth and strength, a need to fight inflation, and they'll continue the path that they're on, but they'll be very careful to say, if anything changes with the data that we're receiving, we have the ability to go back at any time and undo the tapering that we've already done. And the reason why they'll be careful to make sure that people understand that is because it's almost inevitable that a G-Sib falls over. A too big to fail corporation says, hey, we're insolvent, we need a bailout. And at that moment, the tune will change. But as long as it's just your average mom and pop watching the value of their 401k fall, no change of course necessary. So stay tuned, tomorrow might be eye-opening as we hear from the Federal Reserve whether they plan to cut off their own arm or take the easy way out and let the economy overdose on inflation. And one final note, I will be speaking at the Ninja Nation Speak Freely event in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas on March 5th. I've got a link in the description below. All the details are there. The Economic Ninja will be there. CEO of Miles Franklin, Andy Sheckman will be speaking. He's actually sponsoring the event to make it cheaper for you guys. The general access tickets are $150 for the early bird pricing right now. They're going to go up on uh, February 5th. And there's a VIP package available as well that you will get access to a dinner the night before with myself and the other speakers. I'd love to see you there. Link is in the description below if you'd like to get yourself some tickets. As always, really appreciate it, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.